Welcome to Ezika Academy YouTube channel. In this lecture, I want to examine diluted earnings per share in IES 33 involving share options and warrants. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please like the video and also share it with others. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for being part of this channel. So, what do we mean by options and warrants? Options or share options and uh, warrants. Options are contracts issued by a company which allow the holder of the option to buy shares of the company at some time in the future at a pre-agreed price. A contract issued by a company which allowed the holder of the option to buy shares of the company at some time in the future at a pre-agreed price. So, where options and warrants are involved, the number of shares would increase if the option holder exercised the right. The number of shares would increase. Earnings will not be adjusted. The reason for that is because it is not possible to predict how the total earnings will be affected. So that is why you don't need to adjust your earnings. Your earnings will remain the same. Your profit will remain the same because you don't know how the profit will be affected by the share options. So that is why the same earnings you have, the same profit you have before, is what will be used to calculate the earnings per share where options and warrants are involved. The only adjustment is the total number of shares or weighted number of shares. If you want to calculate the increase in shares, increase in shares caused by the option, the formula to use is market price of the company, market price minus exercise price, price over market price. The market price is the same as the fair value. Then multiply by number of shares option. This will give you the amount by which the existing share will increase anytime there is a share option. Now let the question as work example. Keep watching. Example. A company had 8.28 million shares in issue at the start of the year and made no issue of shares during the year ended 31 December 2004. But on that date, there were outstanding options to purchase 920,000 ordinary $1 shares at $1.70 per share. The average fair value of ordinary shares was $1.80. Earnings for the year ended 31 December 2004 were $2,208,000. Calculate the fully diluted earning per share for the year ended 31 December 2004. Now, this question is obtained from Kaplan Study Test, ACCA. Now, let's have the solution to the question. I've told you to compute earning per share. You have Earnings over weighted average number of shares. So we need two things. Number one is earnings, and the second item is weighted average number of shares. I've told you that the problem area is the calculation of weighted average number of shares. Now, let's have working. Working one, calculation of weighted average number of shares. So, 
So, the starting point, if you read the question, a company had 8.28 million shares. The existing share is 8,280,000. Let me have that as balance brought forward. Balance brought forward. 8,280,000 shares. That is the existing shares. In issue at the start of the year, I made no issue of shares during the year ended, 1st December 20 years for. But on that date, there were outstanding options to purchase 920,000 ordinary $1 shares. So this is a share option, option to purchase 920,000 ordinary shares at $1.70 per share. The average fair value of ordinary share was $1.80. This is the market price, and this is the exercise price of the option. So I've told you to calculate the number of shares increase or incremental shares. Incremental shares or number of increase or increase in shares caused by the share options. So the market price is 1.80, 1.80 minus the exercise price, which is 1.70. Over the market price 1.80 multiplied by the number of share option, which is 920,000 shares. So we have 1.8 minus 1.7 divided by 1.8 times 920,000 shares. So that gives us 51,111. So that is the number of shares option. So the weighted number, the weighted average number of shares, we have 8,280,000 plus 51,111. That gives us 8,33,100. One one one. Then to compute the earnings per share, I've told you that the earnings will not be affected. Earnings will not be affected because the entity you cannot predict what the effect of the share option. You don't know the effect it will have or the impact it will have on the earnings. So the earnings will not be adjusted. So you use the existing earnings, which is 2,208,000. 2,208,000. Divided by the weighted number of shares, which is 8,331,111. That gives us 2,208,000. Two million two zero eight thousand divided by eight million three three one 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 one. That gives us zero point two six five dollar per share. That is the annie. That is the diluted annies per share. This marked the end of the solution to the question. In my next video. I will examine where there are potential ordinary shares that are not dilutive or how to deal with multiple dilutive. Please drop the love emoji, like the video, and also share it with others. Thanks for watching, Ezekiel.